Good morning, Okoe region. Hey, it's Tony Miles again. We are back with a segment of Hidden Gems of Okoe region. And guess what? You know what I'm going to say. I am so excited. I am so excited. I got two of my favorite people in the whole wide world here today. And these are powerful. Come on, women. I, women, come on. Turn it up. Listen to this. I got two powerful women of God on this show today. And these are people you should know about. You should know about their ministries. And it's going to be a powerful segment. So for the next hour, I want you to stay with me because you're going to meet and learn about two great women who are doing great things in the kingdom. So first up on deck is my good friend, my sister, my, what I want to say, go-to person. <laughs> and I affectionately call her Julie G, That's right. but her name is Julie Giordano, and she is here, and she is going to be talking about herself and her ministry, mm -hmm. and I just want to say welcome. I've been trying to get you on the <laughs> show, and I'm glad finally God released me to say it's time. Oh, well, it's <laughs> wonderful to be here, and I thank you so much, uh, Tony, again, that we are dear friends and dear sisters in the Lord, and uh and we fan each other, the call of God on each other's lives. So yes. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And I love that. Fan. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love That's it. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, I want people to, before we get into Julie G Ministries, let's talk about you. Okay. Because I want people to, to get to know the person that God has divinely connected me to and and know you as the person and then we'll talk about your okay. ministry so why don't you tell the Okoe region who you are uh well it's a um it's an honor to be here like I said and uh, and, and to be in Cleveland Tennessee yes. because I've been living here five years actually next week will be five years that I've been here, and I'm originally from Lake Charles, Louisiana, so uh -huh. I'm a Louisiana girl. <laughs> and Love uh, it. That's right. Get my slang will be uh, Come on, I, I try to hold it, so, no, don't hold it back. No, don't hold it back. Put it on in. <laughs> you have to watch it. If I get really excited, it'll come out. And uh, But anyway, uh, my story has uh, has been a difficult journey. and uh, But again, you know, it's been one of those um, – pain to passion stories and uh, yes, I so love I that. am from uh, Louisiana and mm -hmm. uh, and that's been my story there I'm uh, have three amazing children yes you and do. Uh, and so they are uh, just really taught you, you know, they teach you a lot about life you know mm -hmm. when you go through your your story and through your journey but um, but through it all like being through major traumas in my life my my story started out hard early uh, mm -hmm. with abuse and uh, by my biological father mm -hmm. and uh, and all different types of abuse whether it was verbal whether it was emotional and sexual and um, and so that was someone that you know you didn't tell the story and you went through many many um, struggles in your mind your your body your yes. you're fighting through it yes. you know? But um, but I'm so thankful that the Lord came in my life early, and yes. um, and He just really drew me in to the to the church and where I accepted the Lord in seventh grade. Amen. And so that I'm such a uh, an advocate of those finding Christ at an early, early age because their stories are already developing through their life. Everybody has a story, you mm -hmm. know. There's no perfect family, you right. know. But. Um, so anyway, so God really came in my life and really changed and rearranged things in my life. And for a long time, the abuse had not stopped. So it was from 5 to 15 that it was, you know, the worst uh, mm -hmm. part of it. And uh, but so uh, I learned to lean on him even when things weren't changing. Yes. And when he began to teach me how to speak to my situation and uh, and began to do that as a young girl, where I really didn't even have an understanding Standing of what, of what that was. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah, no idea, yeah. you know. But um, but it's been uh, that journey of in 
that he kept my mind, you know, mm. and uh, and I think that's one of the biggest part of it is that he is a keeper, and even through the storms that he's keeping your mind and and strengthening you and empower you to get through it. Sometimes it's a rescue and it's going to take you out of it. Yes, and uh, and for whatever reason that wasn't my story of just a. He's always a rescuer. I mean, he's faithful to be yes. a rescuer, yes. you know. But in my story, when that's what I just wanted, and uh, and after a process of time and healing and forgiveness in the middle of it, come on, you know, because the 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 struggle with unforgiveness and even hatred, come on, in that situation is real, and everyone has a right to feel that when you're in the middle of being abused and it's not right. Yeah. You know, but when you're, but it's killing you because it's a poison, you yes, know, that unforgiveness and it was, it was killing me. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, um, so anyway, so through that process, I had two aunts and a sister that really poured into me and was trying to help me. They knew my story. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so they were really helping me and praying and having a breakthrough. And, uh, but I'm, I'm really passionate about this. A breakthrough is for a moment, but a revelation is for a lifetime. Come on. And so in the revelation that the Lord said, I'm not going to rescue you just to rescue you, you know, because I am a rescuer, you know, but I've come to empower you because if I rescue you, I rescue one. But if I empower you, we can change a generation. Come on. And so at 15, that didn't mean anything to me. (laughs) Yeah, great. Wonderful. What what, what you saying, Lord? What you talking about? (laughs) And, uh. But anyway, as I look back over my life, that revelation has carried me. And he continues to give you more wisdom and revelation of what happened in that moment because it's carried me through my storm Mm -hmm. and uh, and where I really was able to walk in victory and and walk in forgiveness and walk in healing and the layers of healing because you you deal with it in different seasons of your life, you know, those, those feelings are, you know, they wake up and They're pain there. wakes up pain. Yes. It, th- it doesn't categorize it in your mind and in your body. So whatever pain or trauma that you're going through or struggle, yes. it, it's really good in being careful that it'll wake it all up. You mm-hmm. know, so you're going through one tragedy and then all of a sudden you're having issues in the other. So there's a, it's a perpetual layer of healing and restoration. Yes. So I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. And that's been my biggest story, how he's kept me, brought me through and given me wisdom to continue to walk in victory and not just a survivor. Yes. There's, I won't say anybody can survive because sometimes the enemy will be glad to take you out. Oh, you yeah. know, all the way. And uh, so, but there's so much more of just trusting him and walking in a true victory and then reaching back and helping others. Because yeah. it's not just about me and my story. It's always about someone else and just trying to help them. And that's just been a passion of mine. So. Oh, yeah. Well, um, your story is one of those stories that is really happens to a lot right. of, and I won't just say young women, it happens right. to young right. boys. Um, where I sit in my community at the Caring Place, um, I am aware of of a lot of these situations. Right. right. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on tonight, uh, mm-hmm. on today, is because I want to get the word out there, you're not alone. Right. You know? Right. And that people are calling people because it used to be you kept it hidden. Right. But now God is calling people to speak about this, the right. unspeakable. Let right. me say it that That's way. Right. To speak about the unspeakable. So mm-hmm. that, as you said, so that we can help one another. Mm-hmm. And, um, and of course, then bring along other people who can step in to learn to forgive. Right. Learn to, because all of that just keeps them locked into mm-hmm. that situation. Right. And so for them to experience true freedom, they have to be able to forgive. Amen. And so, but before we go on, I want to talk about, because you, you're a mom and you mentioned that and you have three kids, so I want you to talk about <laughs> your kids. You're also a ministry leader at Dwelling Place Church yes. International. Uh, I would love for you to speak about okay. that. You know, people already know I'm biased there because <laughs> that's my church. Those that's are my right. pastors. That's right. So we're going to talk about that as well. And uh, then after that, we'll talk about you've been the founder of Julie G Ministries. Okay. But 
Come on, talk about your children. I, saw, well, I, I, I love to shout and uh, <laughs> celebrate my babies, that's for sure. And uh, and they're all grown up, just yes. about, I'm telling you. Uh, my youngest is going to be 25 uh, yes. next month. And then I have an and adopted you look child. you good, girl. <laughs> Uh, well, he's been good, so I'm <laughs> thankful. But um, and then we have um, a, an adopted son that yes. he uh, just turned 26, and then my oldest son is 30, oh, wow. and so that's Gino, Ernest, and then Jade, yeah. and uh, and that's a story all in itself. You know, yeah, it because, is. You should probably yeah, share yeah, that. yeah. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, they're just beautiful babies, and they're all so different. They're yes. just radically different. My oldest, Gino, he's the the uh, the one that's going to run after it all, and <laughs> and he is just like he's the the freestyle, you yes. know, and he's just gonna, you know, do that. And we've just been praying for him, and he has he's just so gifted in so oh, many yeah. ways, and been through many many storms. Even you know, with us losing Gavin, my uh, our second child at two and a half years old, and Gino was four during that time, and yeah. we lost Gavin due to a burn, and so that kind of started a lot in my married life, and um, and so that trauma alone. Um, like I always say, is that um, you're not equipped and you're not born to deal with that type of pain. No. It's not no. in you naturally. No. And so it's so supernatural to, to you have to lean on the Lord because That's I don't right. know how you do it in the natural. There's not enough medicine. There's not enough depression or anxiety medicine to get you through. No, it isn't. Because, you know, but it's truly to a, a real healing and getting on the other side. And, um, and where it's not just about you, and you have, I had a four year old little eyes looking at me and saying, Mama, you can't check out on me. I need you. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. been a real passion with Gino because that has been our story. He started early, yeah. you know, with him, but um, he is. He is amazing. I mean, he's just going to go after it. He's going to run after it. And so I just love it. And we're, you know, fanning and, and believing great things for, for him. him. He yes, has sir. that entrepreneur spirit. So yeah. anyway, and I love his passion. And then uh, we met Ernest uh, when he was eight, turning nine, and we were real big into track. And my oldest son, Gino, was super fast. And so we were doing a lot of summer track and traveling and doing a lot of things like that. So my husband at the time was re recruiting. Um, mm -hmm. And he, that's not what he did for a living, but he did it passion on the right. side. And he was recruiting young kids to run on this track team. And so Ernest, of course, was the fastest. And so we're <laughs> recruiting him. And, uh, and his grandmother was raising him. His mother was in town, but she wasn't raising him. Him. And uh, and so anyway, so we asked if he could run on the team, and they said yes. And uh, but you know, like you're gonna have to like come pick him up every day for practice, and you you know we don't have <laughs> the, you know the finances, and, and that was understandable. Right. I mean, you're, right. you're dealing it's like very very pricey, and so uh, Johnny said absolutely, we'll pay for everything, and Julie will pick him up every day for practice, and that's what. It, so he just became a part of our life. And, um, and then he was just, you know, staying longer and longer and longer, and we just loved him, and he was amazing. And uh, so anyway, so all his grandmother ended up passing, and we ended up raising him. And, uh, and now he went on to play college ball, and, and he's graduated and married now. And, and you got phenomenal. to marry him. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so we love he and Jillian, and so I have a new daughter-in-law, and so that's wonderful, and it's such a great journey yes. of what they're doing. And he's also working um, with my ex-husband, um, Johnny and uh, is going to be taking over the family business. So I anyway, so that's that. wonderful. Yes. And then we have my baby girl Jade, and yes. uh, and so she's so anointed, so gifted, and uh, she came after. Uh, you know, she Gavin. was born after Gavin, so yes. there was lots of emotion, a lot of. You know, she brought a lot of peace in our yes. home because it was Won't very painful. God do it though? Right, that's right. He will do it and every time. Every time. And so in her, just her spirit, her heart, and we all needed it. You know, we mm -hmm. was all in such, um, you know, heavy, heavy grief. Mm -hmm. And so it was a light load at home, you yes. know, just having her come into it. And so God has had a, an anointing and a calling on her life. And um, and so she has a brand new album out, and she's Come the worship on, leader at Dwelling Place Church. And so it's "I Will Dwell." Um, yes. Um, uh, no, "I Will Dwell" is "I Will Declare" is the album, album. but but uh, she is the worship leader at Dwelling Place Church International. We and, when Pastor Jamie was on my first show, 
We played her yeah, yeah. CD. Absolutely. And I've got to get her on here. Yes, yes. Okay. But, we're excited. Uh, yeah, so, we're really excited. But I love too. it about uh, Jay, which is so sweet. Um, she has such a really sweet and uh, authentic personality. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, she has a word. And, uh, oh God, and she's so, powerful. and she, she fell in love with the Lord at an early age and it became real. It became her own relationship. Mm-hmm. It was no longer mom or dad's right. or the she's, youth pastor or the pastor or whatever. It became her own. Yeah. And when she went through her own storms with, of our divorce after 24 years, yeah. um, which was extremely painful for, for everyone, but she, she applied everything she had been learning and she had to put it to the test, yeah. you know, yeah. and God really increased the anointing through that storm and really began to birth a song in her heart mm-hmm. and a passion. And um, so anyway, so she's even stepping out teaching now and, yes, uh, and of course leading worship. And um, so anyway, so we're excited. She's, she lives with me here in Cleveland, Cleveland Tennessee. Tennessee. So and it's she's been a, a joy. lead graduate, y'all. Yeah, yeah, she's a lovely. lead graduate. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Lee was good to her and uh, Lee University yeah. and they were really a blessing to her. And she had many open doors there. So we're thankful for that. Well, before, just real quickly, tell the uh, hidden uh, uh, gems uh, of a Koei region audience uh, what you do at Dwelling Place, and then right after this we'll uh, go to a commercial. Okay, But perfect. go ahead and tell them what you do at Dwelling Place. Uh, it's an honor to, to be here. I moved here to be a part of um, – just the ministry. I, I was coming a part of Pastor Judy's uh, mentoring program, mm-hmm. Judy Jacobs. Um, you know, it's just a powerful, powerful mentoring program that she has uh, with the international. You know, just just it changed my life. You know, yeah. just coming into the you know, IOM. And when I came here, that's just how I got here. And uh, and so we just wanted to come be a part of the church and just a part of the vision. And I'd never moved out of Louisiana ever. <laughs> and so this was the first big jump for me. And um, and so anyway, so it was just the anointing is so sweet there. And lives are being changed. And there's just such a fire, you know, of uh, just a hunger and just a fresh word. And so, um, you know, just starting in January, um, I was offered the position of director of ministries. Yes, ma'am. And so just overarching, there's multiple ministries. We have Pastor Judy's ministry with his song right. uh, ministries that IIOM uh, with the International Institute of mentoring. mentoring and then we have Dwelling Place Church and then of course the Dwelling the Studios right yeah. so I just kind of overarch I touch a lot of different things and really just being a part of just helping grow in the ministries and, and being a part of all of the different ministries and so um, it's a big role a big opportunity and such a blessing and working with Pastor Judy and Pastor Jamie uh, running with them assisting them in everything and uh, we have a great church, a great family, you know, and it's just lives are being radically changed. And so it's an honor to be there. Well, and I also want to say that you are also the minister of uh, women's ministry, yes, which yes. is uh, uh, Awaken. Awaken. And so, and that, that theme, Awaken, is going <laughs> on, and people have put it together yeah. today uh, as, as I continue to do these interviews with these powerful women. But I just want to say real okay. quickly, uh, uh, hopefully my audience has made the connection that the uh, you and I, you came here, you're going on five years. Right. I'm now four and a half right. years, and we all got connected in the International Institute of that's Mentoring, right. which uh, Pastor Judy, that's a focus on women, right. and I'm telling you, as Julie said, it changed her life, mm-hmm. it changed my life, right. and so women out there, if you're looking that's for right. an organization to get connected with mm-hmm. that will empower you, or you know you got something in your belly, mm-hmm. but you don't know exactly what it is, that is the place. Amen. I'm telling you, I walked in not, no, I knew God wanted me mm. to do something great for him, but I didn't know what. But I'm telling you, the day I walked into the International mm. Institute of Mentoring, I never forget after my one on one, Pastor Judy looked at me. She said, Before you leave this mm. weekend, you'll know what God. Wow. And I'm telling you, mm-hmm. when I left that weekend, I went back to Ohio excited Mm -hmm. because I tapped in to what God was calling me to. That's right. Mr. Tony, one thing that I love about when when I first went there, and I think this is kind of my testimony about it, 
um, so many of us have a dream inside yeah. of us, and as we get older, we tend to more focus on our children and yes. not so much ourselves anymore. And uh, but when you get in that environment mm-hmm. of that radical faith, yes, come that's on, that's there. Yes. And I'm telling you, it'll wake up every dream on the inside that's of right. you. And you think, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about writing that book in in about five years, or I thought about or this even, invention, or I thought about this yes. or that. It doesn't matter where there is. it's uh, in, in the ministry. That you yes. Dead. Yes, well, it'll wake it up. It'll wake it when up. When you get in that environment, it wakes those dreams yes, up. It and does. even I brought Jade. She was a freshman at LSU. And so I brought Jade with me the second time, and she had been to amazing youth conferences all over. We've right. done that all of our lives, but she was said, I don't know what's here, but this is good, <laughs> you know? And so, and then, like, when I decided, I mean, I fasted and prayed, and the Lord said, move there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have all my family. Have I lost my mind? Come and, on, Yes. Sister. And so, and Jay goes, you're not leaving me. She left LSU. Had never been on the campus at Lee. She said, wow. I just know there's something here, and I'm going. And so, wow. yeah. And so, and then Lee was phenomenal, you yes. know, just an amazing uh, opportunity for her to be there. And, uh, but yeah, it'll wake it up. And, uh, and, and that's what's so good about it. You want to yes. be a part of that. Well, I tell you what, we're going to go to commercial. Stay right there because we'll be right back and we're going to hear about Julie G ministry and how you can have this powerful woman mm-hmm. come and speak to your women or just come speak to your church. And so when we come right back, we'll come back with Julie G ministries. Mm-hmm. What does the face of need look like? In so many ways, it looks like you and me. The Care in Place mission is to model the love of Christ by addressing basic spiritual, physical, and social needs of people in Red Lake County, Tennessee. And the most important gift we distribute is love. Won't you help us to help our neighbors? Pray, give, volunteer. Quilts and the art of quilting have been enjoyed for generations. Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More in downtown Cleveland is all things quilts and much more. Hyder Hangout stocks a vast selection of beautiful fabrics from upholstery to evening wear and will special order hard to find items. Find all the accessories to make any project fun and easy. Hyder Hangout offers expert instruction with classes for the beginner and the advanced. Ready to show your style? Get to Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More, 219 First Street Northeast, downtown Cleveland. My name is Bill Kyle, owner of Kyle Motors. Our location is 802 20th Street Southeast, next door to Blythe Bower School. We have a lot of cars for $5,000, $6,000. If you're looking for that price vehicle, come on in. We have all price vehicles, and our down payments start at $500. My name is Bill Kyle. We look forward to doing business with you. Good morning, and we're back. Uh, did you miss me? Well, I missed you guys. We are back with uh, uh, Julie Giordano, uh, fec- affectionately known as Julie G, and she is a founder of Julie G Ministries. And so right now we're going to talk about her ministry and um, um, what really, um, um, uh, what birthed this ministry out of her. I think if you were with us in the first segment, you heard a lot of her story and you probably know why. But let's turn it over to Julie G and tell us about Julie G Ministries. Well, Julie G Ministries, um, I think I've been carrying in my spirit for a long time and really maybe didn't have a name to it, Mm -hmm. but I was carrying uh, a powerful uh, testimony of what God had done in my life. And I've been sharing it for many years, worked in youth ministry for 15 years, youth in college, and uh, then moved here to Cleveland and was working in women's ministry, which is just life changing. I I love my women too. And all my young people, because I love purpose. And so, and, uh, and so that really, really passionate about people walking in their purpose, in their victory Mm -hmm. and giving God the glory for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been carrying this with me. I was working in sales, traveling 
traveling the East Coast, and uh, and so I've been carrying this and not knowing when to jump. Like kind of mm-hmm. you run to the edge and look over, and then you're like, oh, I got to keep this going, and then I run to the edge and look over. You need to tell that story. Yes. Okay, because you will. know I know that story. Right. So go ahead. I don't so need to I know. interrupt. So God had been giving me um, – and, and, and just kind of like forewarning me, that it's time for you to step out in full-time ministry. And, and you juggle that, you know, because I'm, I'm working, uh, making mm-hmm. a living, and how do I do that? That's maybe not promised income. What do I, how do I manage all of that? You right. Know, in the natural. You're <laughs> like, how do I do that? And um, so anyway, I've been processing that and praying about it and fleecing it five million times. <laughs> and, uh, and so anyway, so I get a call out of nowhere with my company wanting me to move back to Louisiana yes. to work. And, uh, but the Lord had given me that I was going to step out May 1st, uh, two, 2015, two years ago. Right. And, uh, and I kept you know, putting it off, putting it off. And, uh, and so when they called, they said, I want you to move back in May. You know, and uh, and I knew that my my season was not over here in Cleveland. That that it was just in the middle of it, and I'm there's no way I want to leave. And uh, so I made that decision that I just said, this is my time to jump. It's either I believe it or I don't. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, so I jumped and I told them no and walked away from a great income. Great, in- and, yes. Um, and just trust the Lord and like either you're called or you're not. Either you believe it or you don't. And and so I've been on a two-year journey of, yes, you of have. buying in to this, um, what God has on the inside of me. Because, you know, first, before you can go and share it, you have to believe it. Now, I knew That's I had a right. calling. But there's a whole different process of putting legs to it and walking it out. Yes. You know? Especially when you've been in the business sector for a long time and you're all about, you know, putting it Come together on. yourself. Self planning. <laughs> you know that God is with you, but, <laughs> but there's a totally different when you have to trust Him solely as your provider. Totally and dependent. It is. It is. Yes. It's a totally different uh, area, but uh, but it's the best thing that I ever did. It's just jumping and trusting the Lord. And he has just uh, opened many, many opportunities for me to share my story and what he did in mm-hmm. bringing from the pain to the passion of trusting him and, and uh, bringing healing to many people along the way. So if I'm a women's organization or if I'm a church and would love to have you come in and speak and share your story with my congregation or with a women's ministry. How do we get in touch with you? Well, I have a website, julieginministries.tv, yes. 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 and uh, it has my testimony on it. it has my story, it has, uh, of course, you know, uh, engagement, it has some videos, some blog information, yes. uh, but it mainly uh, it shares a lot about what God has done in my life. And so um, always open for an opportunity. Um, and so that's just the best place to reach me uh, okay. on, on the website. Also has an email there with uh, Julie G Ministries at gmail.com. Yes. And also it has um, um, a tab there if you want to make a request. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would say right now, uh, uh, Okoe Region, that if you are definitely interested in having – and I'm going to say this, Pastor Julie G, <laughs> to come to uh, your um, uh, church or, or, or not even just that. Yeah. This story is even a marketplace story. Right, right. Come to your organization, your business, and share this. She, you mentioned, uh, Julie mentioned that she um, um, worked in the professional arena. Mm-hmm. So she is, I mean, she can do a business workshop, right. anything, because the principles she has learned That's right. is life sustaining. Mm-hmm. And so it will work in any given situation. That's right. That's okay? Right. Pain to passion. That's right. Come on. That works, period. I don't care if you're walking in the marketplace or it's a, a set, uh, a church tradition or whatever. But the point is, it's about growing as a person and and being able to be the best who you are and be able to embrace your pain right so that you can heal right and become whole that's, and, and that's, I don't, that's what it's about right there what, right there and so I don't care what you do or where mm-hmm. you are mm-hmm. um, you need to hear Julie G's story and you need to hear, I mean, she mentors so many women 
And not only with the Institute of Mentoring, IIOM, but she also does it. I, I've watched her. She personally takes <laughs> women on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she has uh, impacted this city in such a great way that she doesn't even know mm -hmm. how much through her mentoring, through her example, the impact that she's making on women wow. and lives in this city. And I just want to say that to you because I Thank watch you. you. Thank you. Okay? And I also know the impact you have also made on my life. Wow. And, and I love the fact that because I love when you say we're fanning. And right. we are. We're right. fanning each other's That's fires. Right. That's right. You know? And we're encouraging each other to keep stepping because, you know, when you are called to the kingdom and you call to totally depend on God, Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, right. uh, I didn't learn that in the corporate world. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> you didn't either. So this is totally out our comfort yeah. zones. Yeah. And so, and I'm going to say that. And so, you know, when people are giving of themselves so much, 100% to others, it takes money. Right. It really does. Mm -hmm. And I know people don't like to hear that. But it does take money. Right. And as I'm, you know, working on the other side, like the caring place, doing good work for people in this community, but it takes money. Right. And so what I want to say right here, and I want to encourage you out there, yes, give a donation. Right. Go to Julie G's website and give a donation. And so I, I, I'm going to uh, toss that back to you and let you do that request yourself. I know I went out there on your behalf and said it <laughs> anyway. But I just want you to uh, just tell them why they should really donate to what you're doing uh, here, not only in Cleveland, but um, wherever God sends you to, mm -hmm. to uh, um, demonstrate and to uh, tell what he has done in your life. Well, I think that the biggest thing that, that I really feel the calling and the mandate on my life um, and about the opportunity to go into other people's, uh, whether it's your church or whether it's a, a youth conference, whether it's a women's ministry, a church, or even like a home group, because I do that a lot too, just going to people's homes and having, because sometimes women want to talk about private things and, and those are really powerful times as well. And, uh, and I think one thing that I'm thankful because there's such a compassion and a real authentic um, uh, spirit that the Lord has given me because I, I do show and, and the God really just shows great compassion for your pain and for your and because people need to know that that they they matter right where they are and to be able to walk into the victory and so um, so that opportunity is always powerful but uh, also with donations and uh, just I think it's just seeding into someone else that's really um, maybe carrying even your story but they're seeding into other people and mentoring and raising them up and so um, so that's why I just want you to if you feel led to make a donation or just an opportunity I think that's even more powerful uh, appreciated on julieGministries.tv TV. All right. Well, girlfriend, it has been absolutely wonderful having you on. Mm, thank you so today. much. Today, um, you know, uh, you have a huge piece of my heart, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just listening to you, and it, I, I'm going, oh, that sound like me. <laughs> oh, that sound like me. So, <laughs> yes. So you know, yes, it's absolutely. so wonderful just watching this tapestry mm -hmm. that God is putting together here, and the divine connection that He is hooking us up. And as I mentor, all right, says, right, like DNA. That's right. Like faith, like <laughs> destiny, like, like, faith, like anointing, like, like anointing coming together. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is doing here in Cleveland, Tennessee. So exciting. And He is bringing us from the yeah. north, east, south, and west. Yes, yes. And here to Cleveland to do it. Something is mm -hmm. about to happen. That's right. In Cleveland, Tennessee. I believe it. Okay? I believe it. And I thank you for being here today. I'm going to have you come back. Uh, our next guest that is coming okay. up, uh, and this just segments me right into that about how God is bringing people in right. to this That's region. That's right for a great move mm, of God. Amen. And so we're getting ready to uh, talk with Pastor Nantoka when we come back. Yay! Uh, yay! <laughs> and uh, then we'll have, after that, we'll have Julie join us back, and uh, then we'll share some more exciting news. Okay. So come back, y'all. I uh, Pastor Nantoka is up next.
My passion is outdoors, but my knees reached a point where I just couldn't enjoy it as well. So I had knee replacement surgery at Tanova. My experience was excellent. My new knees are great. They work well, I have no pain, and I'm able to do all the things that I enjoy. If joint pain is affecting your life, find out how Tanova can help. Come to a free joint pain seminar. Register today at tanovaortho.com. This is Steve Ray, and this is my place, the Midnight Oil Service and Michelin Tire Direct in Ottawa. What do we do? Let me tell you. We sell tires. We service cars. We have gasoline, even gasoline without ethanol. And around here, <laughs> I am the Michelin Man. Remember that local service station in your neighborhood when you were a kid? That's us. We've been here 35 years. We put the service back at the gas station. Steve Ray's Midnight Oil Service and Michelin Tire Direct in the heart of Ottawa. When I was accused of a crime, my liberty was hanging in the balance. My legal rights mattered to me, so I went to the professionals at Logan Thompson Law. Logan Thompson, attorneys at law, when it matters. Is your vehicle in need of a little TLC? Then pull into Surf's Up Car Wash today. Our expert cleaning services will make your car shine like new. Choose from a variety of wash options like the manager special featuring the Lava Shield. Fight back against the daily grime by choosing a wash with undercarriage cleaning and salt removal. As always, Surf's Up Car Wash offers free vacuums, cleaning cloths, and supplies. Surf's Up Car Wash, ride the wave. Time for a home improvement? Need to consolidate some debt? Want to talk face to face with a local lender about the options available to you? If you answered yes, then it's time to contact the financial professionals at Andrew Johnson Bank and talk to them about a home equity loan. There are no closing costs for those who qualify and low interest rates based on credit. Andrew Johnson Bank, the local lender you need, the local bank you can trust. The ReStore has kept over 3,250 tons of materials out of our local landfill since 2004. This has extended the life of the landfill and saved Bradley County taxpayers a tremendous amount of money. The ReStore opens up endless possibilities to turn trash into treasure through do-it-yourself repurposing of ReStore items. It's fun to repurpose, restore, and recycle items that would otherwise be trashed. Do you pay monthly service charge at your bank just to have a checking account? Are you tired of the stress of maintaining a monthly minimum balance? Want to talk face to face with a local banker about the options available to you? If you answered yes, then it's time to contact the financial professionals at Andrew Johnson Bank and talk to them about their sky high checking accounts. Meeting these requirements opens the door for great interest rates. Sky High Checking gives you more so you can soar. Andrew Johnson Bank, the local lender you need, the local bank you can trust. Hoey Region, we are back today with part two of Hidden Gems of the Okoe Region. And my God, if you listen to our first segment, segment, we had a wonderful, powerful uh, woman of God on. Uh, uh, I keep saying pastor. I think I'm being prophetic here. Pastor uh, Julie G. And uh, with Julie G. Ministries. And I'm telling you, and now part two is just as powerful. I have another powerful woman of God who I've had the great pleasure of spending time with and meeting. And I want to introduce to you Pastor Martha Nantoka. Hey. Hello. How you doing? I am doing very well. I'm doing good you, this morning. All right. <laughs> I love it. This is the day. <laughs> yes, that the Lord has made. Come on, and come we on. Will be, we will rejoice and be glad. Yes, we are. We Hallelujah. are. We are. Yes. Now, I'm going to say this. Pa uh, Pastor Martha Nantoka is from the continent of Africa, and she primarily works in Malawi, 
Mozambique, and you do ministry also in South Africa. Yes. Right? Yes. And you do that. You are the founding um, um, pastor of Kuwait. Zeke. Zeke. Yes. International Mission. Ministries. Yes, yes. And that translated means Jesus be, be lifted, lifted up. up. Amen. Come on, That's come right. on, come on, somebody. <laughs> so, um, and I am so glad you you joined uh, me today. Um, our relationship is very special, but it's even more special this time Um and I'll just back up a little bit. Pastor Nantoka and I met at a uh, Judy Jacobs International Institute That's of right. Mentoring. That's right. <laughs> yes. So if you're noticing, there's a connection here. <laughs> And so that's an opportunity. You get to know other women also intimately. Yeah, but true. even though I met you several years ago, and we were both mentees coming yeah. through that, searching out what God was speaking into that's us. That's right. That's right. Uh, but I'll never forget watching you on a floor mm. as that's God right. was speaking to you. Mm. And I remember them helping to take you back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I could not even walk. No, you couldn't walk yes, because yes. God was doing such wow. a work. Amazing. And, uh, Amazing. And, and we're going to share in a few minutes exactly yes. what came out of that. Mm -hmm. But I remember that. But what is so special is when this year you came back and you're visiting and you had an opportunity to come to the caring place. Yes, I And did. walk through the caring place. That's right. Wow. And bless us. Mm. But you and I had a moment. We had. In the, uh, uh, in my office where we were praying and God just made a, I can explain it and you'll hear more later as to now we know why, but uh, <laughs> at the time it happened, we just knew something divine. That's right. That we were going to do together, mm, and that mm. God was knitting us together, together. Wow. For a such a such time, a time. Yes. as this. Yes. Okay. Yes. But before we get in, all, all of right. It, okay. okay? <laughs> I want everybody to hear your story. Okay. Uh, before we get into the ministry things, mm. before we get into all of that, yes. I want them to know you because yesterday, and I, I'm going to share this a little bit, <laughs> there's a great article coming out in the Cleveland Banner tomorrow, uh, Sunday's paper in the lifestyle section. Thank you, William Wright, for doing that. But it's profiling Pastor Martha Nantoka. But it's more of a personal side. And I got to learn. I was sitting there, and I got to learn out a whole lot of stuff, how you grew up, mm -hmm. uh, getting married, your husband, and, and your children, and all of that. So right now what I'd like to do is just have you talk about not only Pastor Martha, but Martha. All right. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, thank you so much. I'm really, it's an honor to be here, and I'm just so excited. Thank you so much mm. for having me this morning on this TV. Love you. I really appreciate, and appreciate you as, as a friend, as somebody we are working together right now. You know, we share a little what God is doing, but I'm so grateful. I thank mean, you. that, uh, you know, you're my friend, my sister in the Lord, and yeah. God is doing amazing work. You know, yeah. through you. Um, let me just say that I was born in Malawi. In Malawi, uh, my mother was a so South African from Republic of South Africa, okay. and my dad in Malawi. And so my dad went to South Africa for better job, you know, um, and met my mom and got married. And I have my so my siblings born in in South Africa, okay. and uh, I was, you know, we uh, I'm born in a family of um, f six. Okay, six. so. Uh, we have four girls and two boys. Yeah. Okay. We are all grown up now. <laughs> I'm the fourth born. Okay. You know, yeah. So my mother traveled from South Africa, heavily pregnant, you know, 1962, and arrived in Malawi. And in February, I was born in a village wow. called, in a district called Incheo, very remote, you know, and um, born not in a hospital, in a home. Okay. You know, yeah, so that means a lot of stuff, you know, you know, uh, that kind of a thing. But anyway, uh, uh, being in there, grown up, 
then later on because of some other difficulties in the in the in the village my daddy decided to move the family in town blanta in in malawi which is a commercial city of Malawi. Okay. Malawi is a landlocked country, uh, bordered by Tanzania, Zambia, if you know Zambia, Tanzania. Yes, I know, you know Zambia. Yeah, yeah, and, and Mozambique borders us too. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, now so, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. so we're, we're landlocked. Actually, yeah. Mozambique closed us from the ocean, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, I grew up in Blanta, you know, going to school there, you know, and um, grew up in a church. You know, mm. I grew up in a church. My father was a uh, alcoholic and a, a chain smoker, you know. But at the very age, I can't even remember him smoking, you know. Okay. He, he came to the Lord. Um, somebody, a pastor reached to him and gave his life to the Lord and become an aide in the church. And he just, every Sunday, it was not like, are you going to church? No, every Sunday we go Gone. with our daddy to church. Yeah. I mean, he takes us to church, whether you're ready or not. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to make sure your clothes are ready. If if your clothes are not clean, hey, you will wear oh. dirty clothes, but he's not going to church without you. Okay. So all of us, we had to go to church with him. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so it's very interesting. You know, um, grew up in that kind of, uh, uh, I knew basically what the Bible says and what 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 they say. You know, let, before I go to what I'm just about to say, let me say that I grew up, you know, um, with a, I mean, our house, I remember, was first thatched with grass, and then my father put iron sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, but during rainy season, oh, my God, we just, like, stand all night, you know, because it's the, the water was just pouring in the house. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my father had a vision to build a house, a better house for his family. And wow. it took so many years of planning because he had to to build it by cash and there's not receiving a lot of money okay. you know so we waited for for so many years but i think it must be uh early uh, um around 74 mm -hmm. 1974 when the house was built and it was such a joy to get into a new house that you didn't have to stand yes we didn't have to long yes long yes, yes yes and yes. there's rainy season so I that know. wasn't like you know, you did it one night. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I is, want people to understand yes. that. <laughs> and now we had like girls' rooms, a bedroom for girls, bedroom for boys. Oh, because love all, it. All, we all just were in the same room. room. So, I mean, it has been a blessing, you know, seeing my father, you know, working so hard for his family. To, for his family. Mm -hmm. But, well, you know, being in that atmosphere, going to church, you know, getting to understand, you know, the Bible in the head, you know, mm -hmm. you know. What what the Bible says, what Jesus came and all that. I gave my life to Jesus when I was seventeen years old. Okay, that's when when I'm saying giving my life to Jesus. You know, being in church, I thought I didn't understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus because I was I thought I was good enough, and I do, I, I thought I didn't need to have a personal relationship with Jesus because mm -hmm. I just you know I just. You know, grew up in church, you know, right, everything. Right. And actually, they used to say I was the best kid, you know, the best teenager in the church. And the ch the pastor always lived for me you know, as a model to the other young people. Okay. But he really didn't know who I was. <laughs> 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 because behind the scene, I had a different life. Okay. And I felt ashamed because he was, like, really talking about me like I'm a super, you know, super but I tell you, when you don't have Jesus, it doesn't matter. You you, you impress nobody, you know? Amen. You know? So I knew in my life that I was lost. I knew that. Mm -hmm. So this other time, there was, uh, there was uh, uh, a girl. Uh, uh, I think I, I would say that there was a move of God or a revival going on in Blanta among the young 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 people, like yes. uh, people that have been at the college, retired, they're working. Yes. So I used to go to that meeting. And, you know, the funny thing was people used to share their testimony that, you know, I was such, I was like this. And now when I met Jesus, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what, I don't think I have that testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I, I have that kind of experience. And every, every once a week we meet and before they preach, so once somebody would stand up and share what they were before they met Jesus, and when they met Jesus, what happened? And I'm like, no, I think I'm, I go to church, but I don't have that testimony. Mm. And the other day, I just had an encounter with God, you know, in my bedroom. You know, I, I just felt, I, I read, you know, Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter 5, is it the right? Yeah, which says that 
Blessed are those that hunger and thirsty. I like for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And I remember that night, I was like, Lord, you know, I want to have that experience. I want to have my past and meet Jesus and have the different life. And I just said, Lord, I am not going to bed tonight until you change me like the way you've changed others. I was so desperate. And I said, Lord, not, to, not in the morning, but please now. And I'm just crying. I said, Lord, please change me. I want to experience this life. And sure, God is faithful. <laughs> I felt like something, like a weight. Like I was, like a, all of a sudden I felt like a weight lifted from me. And I was so, I felt so free like I could fly. When I woke up in the morning, everything was brand new. Everything was new. I'm like, oh, look, everything is new. I remember my brother saying, you look different. I'm like, yes, this is a brand new baby. <laughs> Can I say something right here? Yes. I want people to get this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I'm going to uh, sort of share my testimony. I remember when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. So I was saved. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not so sure my life changed. And so if you truly are saved, then you have an encounter. Yes, yes, okay? Yes. You have an encounter with God. And you go in exactly what you're saying there. Mm. Oh, my God, I have a hunger. I have a thirst. Mm. Show me you. I want to go deeper. And that's salvation. Wow. Okay? Wow. You can either be saved. Oh, my God. Or you can function in the salvation. Oh, my God. And when Lord. you function in the salvation, you have had an Jeez. encounter, and, and you have to change. Yes. You have to be transformed. And, you, and you know, the, a, a, a very interesting thing is that, you know, uh, before... I used to ask people, do you think I'm saved? Uh, uh, do you think I'm saved? Do you think my life is right? I mean, I, I, like wanting affirmation. Yes. But when I had that encounter, I was telling people, you know what? I'm I am saved. saved. I'm a Come brand on. new person. <laughs> you know, the old is gone. You know, uh, you know, the newness of Jesus Christ and the joy yes. and the peace and everything really becomes new. Yes. You know, it's like, it's like, you know what? It's like. You're a different. You're in a different place, in different world. Yes. And you know, and then you start seeing people that are going to church, and they're really not saved. You know, they're good. Yes, they're preaching. Yes, but they're not saved. They don't have an encounter with God. You, you would see that. Oh my God, that's where I have been. You know, and start reaching out to others to have the understanding or the revelation of Jesus, or having a personal relationship with Jesus. It's amazing. And you know what? Once I tested it, once I, I received it, I wanted my whole family. My whole family was, my, and I started praying for one after another to get saved. Because we all grew up in a, in a church, yes. you know, and I started reaching out. And at first, I was trying to preach to them, never worked. I just said, you know what, let me pray. I took one by one, praying, 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 praying. My mom got saved face. And when he got saved, I said, Mom, let's team up and pray for, for ev every single one of the family. Mm. And we started praying for that. You know, it doesn't take sometimes a day or two, three times sometimes. I remember I prayed for my sister for 18 years. Yeah. Now Come she's on. a prayer warrior. She's, oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, my brother got saved. He's a pastor. Yes. My sister got saved is in, with the Lord. My mother got saved. She, she's with the Lord. My other young sister got saved. I mean, I just saw, you know, every single one getting saved, getting saved, loving the Lord, having an encounter with God. It's such an amazing and, and you know, it's so beautiful. And we're praying for the, the cousins and nephews and we're seeing people being saved. I'm still praying for the rest of every <laughs> single one. <laughs> yes, but mm. I tell you, that changed my life. That made me to live again. That made me to have hope again, despite whatever circumstances surrounded me. Mm. I had something bigger inside of me to live for, and that's Jesus. That was, mm. uh, that's Jesus. I mean, no matter what, no matter, you know, I told you, I mean, I was sharing yesterday that I didn't have shoes. I grew up without shoes. I didn't right. even know. When people ask me, like at that at, fel, at the gather, gathering, the fellowship we're having, people right. ask me because I had What's no shoes. shoes Everybody has shoes. I didn't have shoes because these are people that are working. I was the youngest in the group, and I didn't have shoes. And sometimes people ask me, Mother, what, what size of shoe would you wear? 
You know, I, I saw them every every size. I wear everything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. that the people have a specific size of shoe. Me, I, I, what I need is just shoes. Just give me shoes. Yes, <laughs> but you know what? Having Jesus makes the difference. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a rich life. It's a life of 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 joy inside, of peace, of assurance of who you are, not the outer, but who you are. On the inside. Of the inside. Yes, ma'am. And I saw God, you know, I am an advocate of uh, people coming to Jesus when they're young, even, uh, I gave my life to Jesus when I was a teen. You know how God has walked me through the path of life yeah. and prospered me and even con marrying the right person in life Come on. and sing and raising my children in the way of the Lord. Yes, I yeah. mean, it's just been so rich. And I'm like, please, if you can get, if you can get have him in Jesus your life, yeah. in your life at a young age, you yes. know what? He will take you through yes. every yes. single time. Every he will single. every single day. He will take you through, yeah. So uh, you know this is so powerful right here. You know you and I can be here <laughs> all day, mm. but it's so that is so true. And I love what Julie G is doing yes. with young people wow, and that amazing. focus on mm. young people. Mm. I love what my church is doing with the focus on young people yes, because you, you just said mm. a mouthful there. If you can be get be saved mm. and walk in the full functionality oh of salvation Lord. and then oh my god you <laughs> would recognize his voice yes recognize yes. his steps yes you won't settle oh my lord for you anything will less. wait upon yes you wait upon for the lord everything yes for everything oh yes and oh my god and so i'm so glad that you bought that up today and so you waited for that right husband. Yes. You waited for Roy. Yes, and okay. I, and I said no. I'm not gonna uh, allow to to start dating anybody if that's not God. I said no. I'm not gonna go into dating and breaking dating. No, no, no. Uh, because that brings confusion in in, in 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 someone's life. I'm like no. I'm gonna wait for the right person. Amen. Amen. I love that. So, how many kids do you and Roy have? Uh, me and Roy, we have two, but we have three. We we have we, we have a son that is you know um, is is our son uh, adopted in in our in our language. We don't call that name in our in our right. Yeah, it's part of us. Is our son, and you know he's our oldest. Um, he works with me in the ministry. Yes. Oh, he's <laughs> such a prophet of God. He's a powerful man of God. Yes. And then our daughter, mm -hmm. who is thirty years old. Yeah, I have a grandson, Kairos. Kairos. Oh you my God, so beautiful. And Andrew, old, Andrew daughter. Lemon, my son-in-law, and uh, John, the youngest. Okay. Yeah, John uh, works and with me in the ministry. And you also raising your sisters. Yes, my sister passed. You mm -hmm. know, 2014. Uh, 2014. Suddenly in December, he just she was my friend. Yeah. She's my best friend. Yeah. My prayer partner. Yes. Yeah, she's yes. my best friend. But she just fell down, you know, in the morning in the bathroom and passed. When they rushed her to the hospital, she was gone. Mm. I know she's with the Lord, and um, and we took her kids, yes. you know, three of them. So it's a joy. They're my babies. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just love them. I love, I love, I them. love telling you all story because not only is God using you mightily for his kingdom, but it doesn't stop you from being a wife, yes, a, mother. a mother. And this is how God has built us as women. You know, That's we right. can do all things through Christ. Yes, amen. And so uh, <laughs> I just love making that point as well. Mm. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break here. Okay. And then we're going to come back. All right. And we're going to talk about the ministry all right. and what you have accomplished uh, in uh, Malawi and Mozambique. Okay. And then we uh, got a special announcement we're going to uh, mm -hmm. also make. And uh, so why don't we um, uh, step away right now, but you stay right there, Okoe Region, and we'll be right back in just a moment. The Cleveland Housing Authority's mission 
The Cleveland Housing Authority's mission is to provide affordable, safe, and sanitary housing opportunities. Visit www.clevelandhousingauthority.com or call us 423-479-9659. Welcome to A1 Surplus Kitchen and Bath Design, where we offer plenty of options to build or redesign your home's kitchen and bathroom. Check out our flooring selection featuring 100% waterproof luxury vinyl plank with a 25-year residential warranty. We offer new construction and replacement windows, specialty casements, awnings, and Boer Bay windows with 11 different exterior colors. Browse our countertop choices such as Formica, granite, quartz, Decton, and more. At A1 Surplus, we create a unique design for your kitchen and bathroom, so call A1 Surplus today or stop by our showroom. After I was injured due to the negligence of a careless driver, it mattered to me that I received the compensation that I was entitled to. When it matters to me, I choose Logan Thompson. Logan Thompson, Attorneys at Law, when it matters. Welcome back, Okoe Region. Hey, this conversation we were having with Pastor Nantoka before we went away from the commercial, it is, I'm telling you, it is a noun conversation. And I just want to recap a little bit. So when you accepted Christ at the age of 17, yes, and you had an encounter, and we were talking about that, because then you went from just being saved to salvation and walking in the fullness right, of it. Yes. But you also start praying for your family to have the same encounter yes. and, play, and pray for cousins and all of that. Mm. But what I observe is then God really started at that point That's right. of, of developing your heart, enlarging your yes, heart yes. for a greater ministry where you were going to pray in over 1.5 million souls into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? Yes. And that just, and I want you to share with, uh, uh, with uh, the uh, audience about um, how God uh, birthed your mm. ministry yeah. uh, uh, out of you and what it all it has a, accomplished mm. through him through him yes okay yes today yes. so go ahead yes you know um we we are uh, vessels that god will use i mean god will use vessels and uh, i remember 2004 i was at judy jacobs mentoring program and yes. uh, you you remember that i had that encounter yes. you know god uh, I, I remember God speaking to me and said, I, I'm sending you to Malawi, back to my country. Mm -hmm. I was about to, to do an enroll in a, at, at a school here, right. you know. And, um, you know, he said that. I'm like, oh, wow. So you, you know, the meeting was like, like a few days. And mm -hmm. I think it was the second or third day when I had an encounter with God. And, and then um, um, after it all, you know, I'm on my way going back to Pennsylvania. I'm in a Greyhound bus. You know, I'm sitting alone. It's in the mm. evening, and I felt like somebody has come to sit with me. I, I mm. felt that. And immediately, the Lord started speaking to me and said, I'm sending you back to Malawi to show the passion of Christ moving. <laughs> and as he's speaking that, I'm, I have like a, a, an open screen in front of me. I see I'm in Malawi, and I'm in, uh, he's telling me, you're showing it in, in soccer grounds, in, in marketplaces. And I see that I'm in soccer grounds, marketplaces. You know, I'm showing the passion of Christ move. It has just come out 2004, mm -hmm. and I am, I'm in, I'm in my, I mean, I'm seeing that. And well, 
I see thousands of people. People are being saved. People are being healed. Miracles. I mean, people are being delivered. I'm seeing it on a on an open vision, a screen. Right. And that went on. And, and, and after that, I went back home. I shared with Roy, my husband, and the family, and just started praying. And friends started praying. And then, finally, after five months, you know, you know, I, I left. I left. And it, uh, it was, um, if I remember very well, February, when I was in Malawi, on that assignment showing the Passion of Christ movie. To all the instructions were so clear in every district in my country, 28 districts. Wow. And I traveled from with a team there that just came up and said, we'll, do, we'll go with you. And I saw beyond what I saw when on the open vision. I mean, I've seen people just, rem people that are crippled. I saw this guy crippled just rising up and Jesus is just in Gethsemane and he rises up and said, I'm healed, I'm healed and said, I want to receive Jesus and he was a Muslim and leading him and to Jesus. Yes. And we had that night over 4,000 people that just came up to the, came to Jesus and the miracles were just breaking out, breaking out. And I had, you know, I remember this little boy at one district, we were having the passion and this boy, you know, was crippled. I didn't know, but he just sitting there, and I reached out to him. I said, hey, do you, uh, what, what are you waiting for? Your friends, I live with what finished. And said, I want to be able to play soccer with my friends. So I said, okay. So I gathered the team, let's pray. As we started praying, we closed our eyes. This boy just took off. We didn't, you know, we didn't, <laughs> he, she, he took off, ran to his mother. Wow. And when the mother saw him running, the mother ran to the neighbor to the neighbor's house because the neighbor's house there was a child that could not hear or speak. So he just grabbed that child, ran to where we were, and meanwhile we are packing to leave. You know, just brought the child and said, "This child can't hear, can't speak." We prayed for that child, open up the eyes, they, they could see, could hear, and then on we heard the he starts telling us, "This is my boy. He never was crippled." And now he just ran to me, and this is what I did. We saw that again and again. We saw salvation miracles, people being saved. You are yes. so amazing. And I came back excited, you know, what God has done, and ready to go back to Malawi. And I was again at Jesus Jacob's met and he program. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're doing worship, and the Lord speak to me and said, uh, can I, uh, I mean, if I send you to Mozambique, will you go? I'm like, Lord. Mozambique is dangerous. Of course, as a neighbor, I, I mean, Mozambique is a neighboring country to us. And we knew, I mean, witchcraft. You knew the story, oh the witchcraft, oh yeah, all of that. Oh, yeah. And they had war 17 years and the land miners and what, what. And I had, Lord, I would die. And the Lord said, okay, you want me to use you like the way everybody, did, you know, in your comfort zone? So you join that group. I'm like, Lord, I was slain in the spirit. I cried. I said, I Lord, that. forgive me. If I die, I die. I'm going to Mozambique. And, you know, starting, you know, praying and believing God, you know, believing yes. God for the provision to come and all that. Well, the ticket came up, and I'm like, you know, the ticket is here. I'll just take off. <laughs> <laughs> So and I, you didn't have, you didn't know I didn't what have, else he was going to supply, nothing no, else. No, no. You just had a ticket to I just to go a to ticket. I just, I can't wait. I had, because I had prayed and waited, and I tell you, I was so consumed with that because the Lord had started taking me to show me this region where he was sending me five times in the spirit. I, I travel and go there and see this, and I got so consumed and desperate to go at the point. I said, Lord, if I could walk, I could walk. But there's a wash and I cannot walk. I cannot, I cannot cross Atlantic Ocean. You, right. know, you know, I need a ticket. And when the ticket showed up, I just took off. I went wow. to Mozambique. Yes. And I thought it was just for two weeks, really. But when I, when I arrived there, the Lord said, find a house to rent. I'm like, a house to rent? <laughs> and that is just two weeks. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, uh, I mean, a house to rent, it would be still cheaper to pay for a month than two weeks in, right. a, in, a, in a an hotel. inn or something. Although right. I didn't know there's no even hotel there. It's, right. it's, it's, you know. But you know, then I went for the house to rent. Well, this is 12 years now in Mozambique. Oh, wow. And I have seen, I, I, I mean, my life is wrecked. Uh, that region is totally transformed. I mean, when I went there, the people were wearing shoes, no shoes, no what? I mean, no hospital, good hospital, no bank, what? The Lord has just broken out the atmosphere. There's, you know, uh, let me say, that was the stronghold of witchcraft. 
Yes. Whereas that was this when I when I arrived in Mozambique in Bela, the commercial seat, I asked the, the pastors, you know, to go with me from Bela. I said, Can you go with me to this to the to Gongos? Everybody refused. No, we'll come in a coffin. No, that place is very dangerous. I did not know that's a stronghold of witchcraft. Not only in Mozambique, but even in Malawi, my country knows that that place was a stronghold of witchcraft. And I remember Pastor Judy having us pray almost around the clock when you were going into that region. That's also where the poisonous snakes and all of that. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, I remember yes, that. Yes, I remember that yeah. we were on oh my our God. faces for you when you were yes, in that region. Yes, man. And then the Lord cleared out every one of them. You know, just the Lord wiped <laughs> out. And now there's that outpouring. I'm telling you, the the place was so poor. Right now, right now, there is, um, I mean, you talk of overflow, overflow abundance, abundance yes. and s such a blessing. And whilst we're there, you know, we're doing the, I was showing the passion of Christ moving villages on a bed right. shed. You know, we are <laughs> continuing to do that uh, even in other districts within Mozambique. And we've seen thousands of people, hundreds of people being saved, delivered. And then we started a discipleship program. Right. You know, right right on the guard. You know, when you know we do a crusade, show the passion of Christ here. The next day for the week, we are there to do the discipleship program. And now I noted people don't have the Bibles. Well, still the pastors didn't have the Bibles. Oh, my God, I couldn't believe it. And then we started buying whatever we had to buy Bibles from local language Bibles, mm -hmm. like tribal languages, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Bibles, and giving them to the pastor. At least we said, let's target that ev at least every pastor must have a Bible. Bible and yes. those that want to read the Bible, they can come at the church and read the Bible. Mm -hmm. So that has been what we have been doing. And then, you know, later on find out these people have never been trained. If they do, I mean, you go to their churches, they, they, they don't understand or they have not been trained, the pastors. They just had a call of God right. and, just had, and just answered the call right. and never had training. Right. And the Lord put on my heart, you know, to build a Bible school. I'm so excited. So we 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 have we've been you know this, it's still under construction. construction? Yeah, yes. we have roofed it. You yeah. know, seven buildings. You yes. know, on the on the on the property we bought. I bought the property, and um, I'm telling you what. I mean, I'm I'm. Already pastors have registered, have registered to be part of the school. Young people, you know, people, we have lined up people who have registered for right. the school, and the school has not yet finished. And we got to get that school finished. That's my passion. Two, 2015, I was like, we were, I just believe in God that we will open in 2015. Well, it didn't happen. 2016, but I'm saying 2017, this is it. This yes, is it. This right is it. Here. 2017, we're going to finish up. You know, it's already roofed. We need the, uh, the finishing up, the windows, the frames, the door frames, and all that. I'm just so excited. You know, they need to be trained. And meanwhile, well, that is, you know, we're waiting for that. But we are having still teachings. We call it Bible seminars, right. seminars where we go under a tree or we go at somebody's church, you know, and teach the pastors. And now we are taking the pastors into uh, mission trips within Mozambique. We go like 40 days or, wow. or two months with pastors from different churches. From Assemblies of God, Presbyterian, that. Baptist, you know, it's Seventh Day. Yeah, we're taking all these pastors that have have had an encounter with God, and now they know we are one. We worship the same God. We read the same Bible. We belong to the same Father. <laughs> so we take them, these bishops and pastors, we take them to to a district, you know, and stay there for a month. You know, of course, they stay two weeks, and the other team come, and so that they, I don't want them to miss their churches for two, right. uh, you know. Too long. Uh, too long, yeah. So we have that, and two weeks we're with them, and then they go back, and the other team comes, and for a month or two months, it's amazing. And now they're eating together, they're praying together. We have in villages pastors of different churches coming together, praying together once a week. Amen. Yeah, and they're praying for each other's churches and, and all that. It's amazing what God is doing. Amen. I love it. I know you do. You can <laughs> see it all over your face. Hey, look at this camera and tell people where they can donate because we've got to get this school Amen. done in 2017. Yes, okay? yes. Because I know you also want to add some clothing, some food, yes. and all of that. Yes, and I have to do. come over That's there and do. help you <laughs> set that up. So you 
you go ahead. Tell yes, them. Yes, we, we are doing what we call also child transformation program where we are taking care of the kids that are so needy the, and their families developing, the, uh, their families being uh, sup I mean, helped to the point they can support themselves. themselves. Yes. yes. So you can go to Kwezeke International Ministries. It's www.kwezeke.com www.kwezeke.com and the word kwezeke means Jesus be lifted up when you go to our website you know there is a place where you can donate you can be part of this wow I'm excited and also you can mail it to 418 Mount Vernon Road uh, Gap is, a, is, a, is the city in Pennsylvania you can write a check you know you can go to our website you know and we have a, uh, an email kwezeke at yahoo.com so be part of it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I can't just wait. This is my passion to see this school, you know, finished and we can train and mentor pastors and laymen to go and do the work of the kingdom. We have the website up. Ah, so yes, exactly yes. Uh, um, those are kind of churches in Mozambique. Those yes. are kind of churches. But now people are building better churches. Those are like our first churches, this child transformation yes. program. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we do conferences right there in that church. <laughs> <laughs> Three days with pastors from different places. Yes, that's a church right there. Yes, we love it. We love and it. And that's the other picture. It's a crusade, you know, Passion right of Christ. Yeah, we're, we're showing the Passion of Christ. Christ. And then afterwards, we do an altar call so you can see people giving their life to Jesus. And then after that, we give them the booklet of John in Portuguese. Oh, I love, yes. yes, and then we do the discipleship programs. Yeah, that's what we do. Yes. That is so awesome. Thanks for putting it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, we got a great announcement to make okay. uh, while you're here and what God has put on his heart. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. Okay. And we're going to come right back. And we're going to ask Julie G to join us since All she's right. still here. Oh, she's my friend. <laughs> yes, she is. And we'll, we'll make this announcement. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> What does the face of need look like? In so many ways, it looks like. What does the face of need look like? In so many ways, it looks like you and me. The Care in Place mission is to model the love of Christ by addressing basic spiritual, physical, and social needs of people in Bradley County, Tennessee. And the most important gift we distribute is love. Won't you help us to help our neighbors pray? Give, volunteer. Quilts and the art of quilting have been enjoyed for generations. Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More in downtown Cleveland is all things quilts and much more. Hyder Hangout stocks a vast selection of beautiful fabrics from upholstery to evening wear and will special order hard to find items. Find all the accessories to make any project fun and easy. Hyder Hangout offers expert instruction with classes for the beginner and the advanced. Ready to show your style? Get to Hyder Hangout, Quilt Fabric and More, 219 First Street Northeast, downtown Cleveland. My name is Bill Kyle, owner of Kyle Motors. Our location is 802 20th Street Southeast, next door to Blythe Bower School. We have a lot of cars for $5,000, $6,000. If you're looking for that price vehicle, come on in. We have all price vehicles, and our down payments start at $500. My name is Bill Kyle. We look forward to doing business with you. My passion is outdoors but my knees reached a point where I just couldn't enjoy it as well. So I had knee replacement surgery at Tanova. My experience was excellent. My new knees are great. They work well, I have no pain, and I'm able to do all the things that I enjoy. If joint pain is affecting your life, find out how Tanova can help. Come to a free joint pain seminar. Register today at tanovaortho.com.
Well, welcome back, Akoi Region. I tell you, it has been awesome up in here today. We have had church. In fact, I was telling Julie G, I feel like I need to take a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, God is so good. But I promise you that we were coming back, and I would have uh, Pastor Julie G, and I would have Pastor uh, Martha Nantoka for a great announcement that we are making and uh, we got to have Pastor Nantoka actually make the announcement and uh, because this is a vision that God had get, given to her. But uh, I asked Julie G to join because DPCI, uh, uh, we are Dwelling Place Church International, and our pastors, Martha is one of uh, our missionaries that we love to uh, give to time, talent, and treasure. And so we feel like this is, we are a part of this too and because uh, we are coming behind her, giving her all types of support. And I also said earlier that God had connected us mm -hmm. Uh, for a divine appointment. So, Martha, why don't you go ahead and, and share with everyone uh, what's coming up? Yeah, I, I want to share with you that uh, um, on the 9th, 10th, 11th of August, just this coming week, we're going to have an awakening miracles crusade. Mm -hmm. And let me share how the Lord has been dealing with me about this. You know, it, 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 it started way back 2010 when the Lord started dealing with me, speaking to me. I was in Africa and the Lord just started talking to me about America, you know, talking mm -hmm. to me to come to America and start doing the crusades, you know, that I've been doing in Africa to be doing here in America in arenas, in stadiums. And you know that, I mean, um, being an African from Africa and God speaking about that you know that is huge I mean that is like oh god it's like oh my god you know but you know what um I've learned to just say yes that's what I've learned to say yes I just believe this is time when the Lord is wants to visit America the power of God to move America in a way that we have never seen and I just I'm just consumed with this to say, you know, God wants to reveal himself in this nation. God wants to demonstrate the power of his son. Actually, let me just say that this is, you know, this is the time. We are living in a time when Jesus, the revelation of Jesus fills the earth. And what is the revelation of Jesus? Is Jesus himself and the works of Jesus. I mean, when people, you know, come to know him in a way that they cannot deny it. You know, they'll have to choose, well, I know Jesus is Lord, but I, whether I follow him or not, the choice will be in their hands. But God wants to reveal Jesus on the earth this moment, this time, um, uh, for, for, for the salvation of the masses, the salvation of every single one. He came that no one should perish, but that every single one be yes. saved. That is the mission. Yeah. That That's why Jesus came. You know, so I just want to share with you that, this is the time come on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. You know, uh, they're going to have miracles. Bring the sick. Bring the sick. Mm -hmm. Bring the sick. And s I'm not saying maybe, no, bring the sick and see yes. what God is going to do. Because Jesus paid the price for healing. He's coming to restore. This is the time we're in a new season. We are in a new chapter where God has opened a new chapter for the miracles and the signs and the wonders to break out all over the planet, all over the planet for mm -hmm. the glory of Jesus. So when God has been showing me this, I mean, uh, open, I've had open visions about uh, miracles in stadiums, in crusades here in America, here in America, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm so excited and thrilled that sad, I mean, the door has been open in this place. It's a, a horse arena. Oh my God. Yeah, come I on. I am so excited and I'm so expectant. And what I'm asking you, bring your friends, bring the sick. I've seen cancer being falling off. Come, expecting cancer to fall off from your body. Come, expecting whatever has been challenging your life and threatening your life. Come, come, and, and God will be there. God will be there. Just come and see what the love of the Father, the love of, you have received death sentence on your life by whatever was going on through your body. Come, believing, expect that this is your time. This is your day. This is when God is going to touch you and heal you and restore you and you have a personal encounter with God. Come, come on the 9th, 10th, 11th of August 2017, a week, five days from today. 
you under, it's just on the door. For, don't miss it. Just come. Bring friends. Bring your family. Bring whosoever you can bring. Tell everybody. Just come and believe God. You will see how God is going to touch you and transform your life. All of us will be transformed because it's a God time. It's a God moment. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's what I share. And you know what? I don't know how I come behind that because there's really no need other than to say the, the Awakening Miracles Crusade. You know, let, let me just, can I share something? Yes, go ahead. Just, uh, uh, was it early last month? Was it early last month before I came to Cleveland? Though this guy, you know, he's, I, I met him. I know him. He was like a brother in the Lord. But he had, his tall was eating up, you know, uh, uh, to the point that his he's toe. the bone, the mm -hmm. bone was 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 being affected. Right. And they told him, you know, he was at the slave place, and they told him go to the doctor. They wanted to amputate that that toe to to cut it off. Right. So he called me and said, "Can you pray with me? Right. You know, pray with me that the Lord will heal me." You know, I said, "Okay, I'll believe God with you." So he says, "Can you pray with me in the morning as I drive to the to the place for Come the on. doctor to amputate my toe?" So I said, in the, uh, I said, okay, I'll pray with you. Then I changed my mind. I'm like, no, I'm not going to pray with him in the morning because in the morning it's my busy morning and I have my time with God. So I prayed in the night and I said, I'll just text him. I called my husband, you know, we are praying and we touched my toe, you know, we're touching my toe, mm -hmm. praying for a miracle on that toe that it will not be imputed. It will, God will touch it. Immediately I started feeling heat on my toe. So um, I said, Roy, God has healed this guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I text him, don't call me in the morning, you know, tell me when you're back. In, when he was back, he's screaming on the phone. He said, you can't believe it. When they removed the bandage and they, they looked at, there's not even a scar, nothing on the toe, nothing. And, and the doctor said, no, it's a long X-ray. He said, no, here is the X-ray. I'm just, just two days ago, I was at the X-ray. So they checked, no, nothing. You know, and said, no, you have no problem. And he touched it, nothing, no scar, nothing, completely healed. This is the God. This is the God that we serve that is the God, the king of the universe, mm -hmm. the creator mm -hmm. of the heavens and the earth. Yes. You know, when he calls out like the way he's calling all of us on the 19th and 11th, yes. let's give him a chance. Let's come and come see on. what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Take every unbelief over the window. Throw it over the window. Come expecting that the God who walked in Capernaum, where everybody was healed, the God that walked, you know, in Galilee, and everybody that came was healed. This is Jesus himself, you know, coming. Not me. I'm not saying I'm Jesus, by the way. I'm not. You know, but I'm saying he is coming with his power, his presence, and come expecting your miracle. Come, you know, sometimes I believe that people, we believe the sentence that the, the, the doctors Dr. have told Seth. us, yes. you know, the death sentence on our lives, you know, and when God but has the another truth plan. Is. Yeah. The truth yeah. is, you know, the truth is God is the healer. He has not changed. He changes not. So come and experience your personal touch with God. See God reversing everything that was negative, on it, being inner healing, being physical healing, being mental healing, emotional healing. Come expecting. This is your turnaround. Come. And you see and watch what God is going to do. That's what I can say. Just come. Come. Yeah. Akoi Region, you have heard the invitation. There is nothing else that needs to be said. Um, it's just been a mighty. God is here. And the anointing, the power, you can feel it in this room. So I know you're feeling it out there. God is calling you. Jesus is it's drawing cool, yes. you near. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you must come. come. We ask the churches, the pastors, mm -hmm. but most of all, we ask you, the community, to come expecting. Yes. God wants to do something Jesus. different yes. in your life. Right. And so, you know what? It won't cost you a thing. But to drive out on 200 Nature's Trail, you guys know where the Tri-State Exhibition Center is. By the theater that you go to, you just keep on coming down the road, and God is going to meet you there. Whatever you need, it will be there. All you have to do is come and receive. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank you for joining me this morning. I know this is a little bit of a different show, 
but this is God having his way even in here today. So have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed rest of your life. But again, I urge you, come expecting August 9th, 10th, and 11th at the Awakening Miracles Crusade. Thank you.